Why hello there! I am now doing the second part of this series and I've created the clone of the car and I was originally going to actually make this a mid-2000s Bozozoku Ricer type car. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any mods to actually allow me to do this sort of stuff, which is very unfortunate. Like, there was this guy, but unfortunately, he didn't share any of the mods that he was using to get these weird extra shapes. So, I'm kind of poop out of luck. Interesting vid though, go check out Zab. So instead, we're just going to do an updated version of this. Now, I want to keep this in the general theme of what it would be that people do for these cars. So they're going to keep them basically all the same here, but we are going to switch the engine to a 660cc engine, which is more what the later versions of these have. Now we're going to go to 2005 and we're gonna grab ourselves a really nice looking 660cc engine. And we are not gonna have this one over square, we're gonna have this one really, really under square so then we can get a really nice high revving engine out of it. And we're gonna do our little old trick here. Now I'm not sure what most riser engines go with, but we're going with our own custom thing here. 659.8, so we're 0.2 of a cubic centimeter. Uh, I think we're doing pretty well here, 21 kilowatts. Now the reason why I went with uh, upgrading the engine is I wanted the idea of them just going, well it's a K car but we want to modernize it so we're going to put a modern K car engine in it, especially since you wouldn't be able to fit a particularly big engine in it the way it is currently. And we're going to pick a turbocharged one. We're going to go ball bearing and we're going to go with performance. Oh wait, too much compression and raise that RPM. Oh, I love doing this to <laughs> little engines. It's it's so much fun to do this to engines. What do we got here? Is there a problem? No, no problem. Okay, good. Now just change the exhaust size. Oh, oh, nice. I like it. I've created so much extra power at 43 kilowatts. It's telling me that the uh, gear racing is, uh, ratio is stuffing up the car's drivability. Let's give it a listen, shall we? Nice. I mean, as nice as you can expect from a car like this. I'm going to use a little bit of extra fuel to say that they tuned it. And then give some of that in. I don't know if there's actually really any power to be gained out of this other than just putting more pressure in. Oh, okay. Yeah, apparently our, our uh, intercooler was way too big. And we are going to say that this mid-2000s engine has variable valve timing. Woo! Yeah, that... Huge boosted power. Maybe we'll say no. We'll say that they just got a bargain basement engine because this is a mid 2000s tuner. They're not going to do a whole lot to this car. Wait, was this a four cylinder? I completely forgot that this was a four cylinder. <laughs> okay, then let's uh, also change over to a performance in the thing here. Do we want to go race? You know what? We'll probably go with the race one because eBay parts or whatever you want to call them, like really cheap parts for these cars would be easy to come by. Also, a race one would be lighter. As, yeah, here you go, the weight, uh, wait, what? This weighs apparently zero for the intake manifold. Oh, also per cylinder. Yeah, of course, because why wouldn't they have that? I love it. Ooh. That's better. And probably raise this RPM as well. There we go. Now. We are going to wide body it. Woo! Yeah! Now, I wish I could get like black wheel arches, like the screw in side wheel arches. Let me show you what I mean. This style of add on started to become popular at the time. And only in more recent times did they start to become popular to unpaint them. Because back in the mid 2000s, it was all about trying to make it look as if it was a really special car. So you would have it the same color. But in more modern times, now we just have them with uh, their basic black color. But still, I would like to do that for this car. Unfortunately, I can't. We're going to do a little bit of the fiddling and tuning. We're going to say that this also came with the new transmission because it is 20 years newer. Wait, hold on. There we go. 2005 transmission here. So we're going to say that it's 20 years newer. It's got a much better transmission now. And now the top speed is up to 183. I like it. Now we have a little bit of wheel spin, but we are going to put a big chunky ass wheels on here because that's what you do when you're rice tuning a car. 
Oh boy. And we have to offset this, obviously. You know what? We're going to have them poking outside of the wheel wells. Because why wouldn't you? And they're also going to be alloy wheels this time around. Nah, these wheels need to be thicker. <laughs> they need to be much thicker. Noise. Uh, we'll deal with brakes in a little bit because we do have to take into consideration new aerodynamics. For instance, this. Alright, let's get to making this thing pretty. We're going to try to say that they, they probably would have picked up... Oh, you know what? They shaved this off. These things get shaved off when modifying, so we're going to get rid of them for now. And because a lot of tuners also put on fiberglass front bumpers, they probably would have made them the same color as the bumper. So we're going to go ahead and change that back. You know what? We might pick a new color. I think in the time, like a candy apple color was very popular. So let's go with like a candy apple green. Hmm. Very candy-ish, though. Not actually candy-ish. Whatever. You get the idea. You get what I'm going for. Wait, what about Chrome? Hmm. Chrome cars didn't really start to catch on until the 2000s with uh, more vinyl wrapping becoming available. So we're going to go with normal paint. But I really did like that Chrome. Is there anything else I can do? Oh. Oh, that's nice. Except it still looks like a vinyl wrap. I think the aluminium works. It almost looks like a vinyl wrap, which is unfortunate. Oh, nah. Back in the era, that, that would have been hard. So we're just going to go with the vinyl wrap, and we will change the color of this in a little bit. Uh, is there body deformation that we can do to change how this bumper looks? Oh yeah, much more low profile. Man, that stick out a little bit? Well, that didn't really change much at all, did it? Now it's time for purification. I do want to point out that I'm guilty of putting these sorts of bumpers on my car. I did actually have a Nissan 180 that I turned into a Sil80. So I know very intimately what these bumpers are shaped like, but this is the best I can do. And I think it actually turned out really close. Uh, also, I can subscribe. <laughs> and here we have our mid-2000s racer. It's got the one mirror for extra aerodynamics. It's got the side skirts. It's got the painted front bumper. It's got the Subaru hood scoop. Can you come into focus, please? Come on. You can do it. I know. You. There we go. Cool. Uh, it's got the big fat wheels. It's got the extra scoop thingies. It's got the uh, other things. Lots and lots of things. It's got the big ass rear spoiler on a front wheel drive. It's got the... Oh, this this sucks. Hold on. Let me just... Cool. Out of this. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so we've got the uh, big front splitter thing here. Got a shaved front bumper, so then it's narrower and closer to the thing. Got the side skirts. Though the color here is like... It doesn't create such a disparity as the last one did, so yeah, this is much better. Uh, it's got this sort of style of rear bumper, which is very popular in this sort of era as well of the mid-2000s. The spoiler, which is completely pointless, <laughs> it's going to be a ricer. Uh, yeah, I, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. Though, the next version, the third part of this three-part series, will actually have... What do you call it? Ah, oh, the Hoonigan-style sort of vehicle. So it's going to be changed to a tube chassis. It's going to have probably push rod suspension. It's going to be all wheel drive. And we're going to see if we can cram a big V8 in it. Because <laughs> that's what he does. Okay, now that we're done with uh, the showing off part, we're going to try to up this aerodynamics. Now, I know that you're meant to balance 61% front. So we're going to need 61%, or we'll just round it off, 62% of the downforce to be on the front. Do I have to do math now? God damn it. Let's just say that that's, that, that that's all good. Looks good to me. Uh, no wonder cladding because <laughs> this is the mid-2000s, bro. I mean, I suppose some people did paint the underside of their cars and make the mirror finish, but yeah, not with this guy. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 no, no, that's not what I wanted. What I wanted was this. Can we, 
can we select that, please? I hate how sometimes you just can't select things. Oh, there we go. Nice. So we can get rid of that, and then we can stick on a big, fat, single exhaust. That would kind of go into the bumper a bit with the style of the day. Uh, we'll have a go about there. We'll have a go on top, and we'll make it big. Big fart cannon. That's what they had back then. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work. We have to do something like that. Nice. Oh, bro. <laughs> I don't know if you find this as funny as I do, but I really love that. That's so good. So good, that's your man. Yes. I'm a weeaboo. All right, here we go. Uh, we've lost considerable large amounts of top speed. I think we lost like 10 kilometers an hour. Our zero to a hundred. Wait, is that slower than the previous version of the I don't remember what the previous version was, but god damn. Our wheels, yeah, they're all good. Brakes, now, here we go. We need, though they didn't really put a whole lot of effort into brakes, but I get the feeling upgrade to discs would be an easy one and they would only bother doing it where it's necessary. So they'll do it to the front. Now, here's your trade-off. We can do a little bit of brake balancing because that sort of thing did kind of exist back then. People knew about it. I'm just gonna make it so then the rears don't lock up. And then to save weight, they would remove ABS. Oh, ABS, there is no ABS. Well then. Of uh, worn out gear. Let's go with basic as AD safety. So we're gonna have at least a seat belt now. Uh, like, they'll probably have a racing harness. We're gonna go with... You know what they used to do? They used to take out the passenger seat and then have one racing seat. That's what they used to do. <laughs> oh, 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 it's gotta have a stereo, guys. It's gotta have a premium CD. Yes. Oh, you know what they also did? They also put in, like, really hard stuff uh, brake pads. So we could use that to increase our brake force. We just don't want it to lock up. Now, they're not going to change the rear brakes, but they would change the front brakes and maybe put in a little bit better brake pads like what we just did. This all looks good. This all looks good. Let's go here. And they would put in basically race suspension. So we're going to go with a coilover type of thing. So we're going to say that they updated the thing to at least a gas monotube. I really still don't know what the difference is between those two. I just know that this one's sportier. But that's all I know, and it would be basically set up for race. So that's what a uh, thing that they would do. Uh, we, you know what we need to do? We need to make the rear wheels fatter. Oh, n oh, what a sh oh, making the rear wheels wider. Oh, what a shame. Oh, <laughs> uh, can we make this any lower? Damn, I wish I could dump this even lower. I want this thing to be scraping on its underpad. Like that's how low it needs to be. Unfortunately, that's not an option here. Well, we have our tuned car to absolute perfection. Let's see what it does around the racetrack now. Let's see if it does less than a three minute lap. A 251, it does better now. Let's try the Top Gear test track. And that does a 145. So it's not like a terrible car on their like uh, lap times leaderboard thingy but yeah uh let's go export and try this bad boy out let's just take a moment to appreciate just how sexy and how rice this car is i love that fart can on the back we used to call them milo tins because if you know what a milo tin is they're just ginormous and people would joke that you're not putting an exhaust on you're just putting a milo tin on the end of your exhaust <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. I don't know about the paint, guys. I'm I'm not sold on it, but it is a cheap paint, which you probably would use after having to fix up the bumper from like crashes and scrapes and all that kind of stuff uh, like a hundred times. But yeah, here we got the fart cannon, got the big ass rear wing, got the front area here with canards, I think is what's called on the front, which will undoubtedly do so much <laughs> um and we brought it here to this racetrack because it's not really a racetrack these sorts of things were popular during this time for people to go out and do cheap and easy drifting like a lot of these companies realize people want to do drifting they don't need a high-speed course cool let's bring them out to here now unfortunately 
We can't do drifting. Oh, I left it with a front locker. That was my bad. <laughs> oh boy. So let's see what the handling does. It's uh, it it has been adversely affected. I feel. <laughs> it, <laughs> oh, can we pick a gear? Pick a gear, please. God damn. Oh boy. That that exhaust note. Not the greatest. Ah oh, shit. Oh no. We've ruined our car. And at this point, they would just rip the front bumper off and also whatever that glitch is. And then they would keep going. Yay. Wow, there's not a whole lot to do with this car apart from switch over to realistic so we can have a gear to be in, please. Because goddamn, that thing sucks. You know what was also popular at the time? Drag strips. We should probably do a quarter mile drag race in this thing. Oh boy. This thing locks up like crazy, but you wouldn't do anything about it because, uh, well, that that would be extra work. And as long as it looks good at SEMA, why would you care about anything practical about the car? Let's see how it does in water with these big ass wired tires. Wow, just complete understeer. Not even pretending as if it can turn there. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, we're gonna do one quick drag. Uh, race and be on to the racing section. I hate DMG map loading times. Okay, guys, let's see what we can pull off of this guy. Though it's probably going to do the gear shuffle. We're going to see what we can do. I'm just a straight drag strip, not having to change gears on my own. Okay, we're already at the 8 second, and is it a 10 second car? No, it's not. Well, I fail the Fast and Furious challenge. <laughs> It's a 10 second car, not a 10 minute car. Alright, here we go. And 20 seconds. I mean, does that mean it's twice as good as a 10 second car? Because it does twice the. Uh. Let's try an automation test track lap! Yay! We're not going to do the diff lock. <laughs> Though I probably should have put an LSD in here because. That was kind of a thing that they would do. Oh, they would just weld. I don't know. I don't know what you would do for a front-wheel drive because I've never really tried hard to modify a front-wheel drive, even though I do have a fantastic Ford, Fo uh, Ford Fiesta XR4, which is also known as the ST150. I love that little car. I think I have to sell it, though, because I just can't afford to not sell it and have it in my driveway for the longest time. The car will just... D disintegrate slowly into a mess of uh, worn out oh dear well now as I was saying my uh, Ford Fiesta is probably gonna die disintegrate into a mess of worn out o-rings from just being left over time and a dead battery to boot as well so I I have another vehicle that I kind of need more than it which is my ute so I'm gonna get rid of that unfortunately uh, I would have loved to have modified it though, but modifying a car here in Australia just kicks the value of the car into the ground. So yeah, that's not something I'm ever going to uh, do to a car that's actually worth something. And I think that's probably the most expensive car I've ever owned. All right, we're about to see what this thing can do on the back uh, straight corner here. We're going 145, so we're faster than I think what we were last time by about probably 10 kilometers an hour. And it's doing it well. It's not scrubbing off any speed. Nice. And the uphill section here is not too bad either. All right, how are we going to do with this corner, which was a problem last... Uh, not a problem last time. <gasps> okay, well, this time it's a problem because this time I have what's called speed <laughs> okay let's keep going come on car you can go faster than this you've got an accelerator i i don't know bro i was kind of expecting a little bit more than this but then again what did i expect oh, oh no 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 lock up no lock up please good there we go once again i've reached the point where a lap would be over and I'm starting to run out of steam of commentary to do on this car because it is so slow. <laughs> oh boy, this is... These cars are not particularly great. I can't wait to see how hard I can push this car with the Hoonigan version of it. That That's going to be fun.
It's not going to have this weird kind of style bumper, which was popular in the mid 2000s. It's going to have proper uh, full undercladding downforce to a rear diffuser on the back that's going to work properly. It's going to probably have less of a wing on the rear. It's going to have decent front downforce. It's going to have proper functioning brakes. It's going to be all-wheel drive. It's going to have a big, big engine in it. We're going to fit the biggest engine in there we could fit. It's probably actually going to end up being a V6. Probably not a V8. But yeah, there we go. I think we knocked off like what was the last lap that we did here? It was like a 334. So we knocked off a good 25 seconds off a of lap time with this. So actually, it wasn't all in vain. Nice. Uh, I hope you guys like this. Oh, you know what? No, no, before I go, you didn't think I'd forget, did you? Hey, boy. Yeet, 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 yeet. Okay, actually much better at towing we're getting five kilometers an hour on dirt Woo! yeah oh this uphill is actually quite the struggle this um why have i done this to myself all right maybe a burnout will work guys nope okay burnout didn't work okay we're gonna go with a realistic gearbox Burnout time, here we go. Yes, yes, there we go. Problem solved, guys. See, look at that, no issues. I am a problem solver. Okay, back to Arcade Gearbox. Even if that is probably still a mahusive mistake. Wow, oh my God, this thing is so much faster. And with the extra downforce, it'll help get the trailer under control as well. Because one of the things that trailers do is help with slipstream. And that should help the trailer in the back not be such a drag on the car. Yeah, look at that, guys. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, no. We're, oh, no. Oh, dear. Well, we've bend it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye.